CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Society for Pediatric Radiology's Advances in Fetal and Neonatal Imaging. This excerpt is from course director, Dr. Christopher Cassidy's lecture titled, Fetal Neck Masses. If we're gonna talk about masses, uh, basically we're talking about two different kinds of pathologies. This is mostly what it boils down to, germ cell tumors and vascular malformations. And we'll talk about a few other things, but let's start with the germ cell tumors. So these, these, two, these two categories really make up almost all the pathology that is gonna interest us. On ultrasound for a germ cell tumor, what are we interested in? If you see some calcifications, that's very helpful. Most of these are teratomas. Um, when you slice them pathologically, they may have other little bits of germ cell tumor in them, but they're primarily teratomas. And they're almost always mixed cystic and solid. Um, that may not help us, that feature, because we're gonna see that there's a significant overlap with the vascular malformations too. Um, on color and Doppler imaging, they're often quite vascular. Uh, there's a lot of steel, a lot of blood flow to them. So let's see, here's a clip. And I'm hoping you can see on the clip, occasionally you'll be able to pick out a calcification. Um, often the septi uh, between the various cystic components are sort of thick and irregular. Um, if you put the color on, there'd be a lot of flow associated with this. But the, the key feature really about the uh, teratomas or about the um, germ cell tumors is that they're centric. So they arise in the same uh, space as the thyroid. They're coming from a particular space and they're growing out, which means they're pushing everything else away around them. That, that is the principal thing. And I think most of you who are pediatric radiologists are very familiar with the concept of how to distinguish or how to help try to distinguish in the, in the a neonatal or a pediatric abdomen between a neuroblastoma, for example, and a Wilms tumor. It's the same sort of concept. We're, we're looking for something that's going to be centric and, and push things away. So um, all the other structures are pushed aside, and that, so that's the key feature that we're looking for on MR. Vascular malformations, on the other hand, may be mixed, solid, and cystic. Most of the ones that we're talking about are macrocystic uh, lymphangiomas, so they're primarily cystic, but you know they can have microcystic components that look solid. And you may see blood flow. It's mostly at the margins. You're not gonna pick up so easily the blood flow that's in the little septi, like you might if, say, you were doing a, a postnatal MR and you could get some enhancement in the septi after gadolinium. But you're not gonna see that so well in ultrasound. So on ultrasound, the features are that maybe the septi are a little bit thinner, you're not gonna see the calcifications. My experience is that these are, in contrast to the germ cell tumors and the teratomas, um, these are not tense particularly. So you can take the ultrasound transducer and you can push on them very squishy and very moldable, which is a key feature that we would like to know about in terms of a delivery option, for example, or what's gonna happen with the airway after birth. Okay, so on an MR, in, in, in contradistinction to the germ cell tumor that I showed you, that centric and pushes everything away, the key feature about a, a vascular malformation is absolutely no respect whatsoever for any sort of tissue plane. It just goes wherever the heck it wants. So if you look on this, for example, note how it's creeping down the shoulder over here and it's creeping up in the soft tissues of the scalp and now it's going down into the mediastinum and obviously it's all throughout the neck. And when we look on axial imaging, we can see it all through the soft tissues of the back of the neck, all the way around the front. And then here, what's happening is this is the, the bone around the, uh, this is the spinal canal. There you can see the cord in the center. And then what this lymphatic malformation done is, has gotten between the cervical spine and the tracheoesophageal complex. Here, you can see a little bit of fluid in the trachea and lifted the whole thing up and off of the spine top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com 761V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.